I get, I'm getting a little clap here. How's everyone doing? Yes, awesome. It's good to see you guys. We are excited to worship. If you'll stand with us, we're going to do that. fasting and that's a huge feat if you have participated in that and I said it a couple weeks ago if you feel like you messed up that's okay you just pick up and you start again and those things that you decided to fast 
But in this time, um, the pastor team, the prayer time, we've really been praying that God will guide you, um, that he'll challenge you during these 21 days um, as we grow together because it's something we're doing together as a church family. If you were here last week or maybe you listened online, you know that we're trying to be very intentional in these prayer moments that we're creating on Sundays during our worship experiences just to take time to focus on very intimate conversation with God, which is just prayer. That is what happens when you pray to God because the Bible tells us that our prayers are powerful. Read it. It's there. It says that when we pray, it's powerful. So today we're going to take just a few minutes to pause. I'm going to encourage you to just reflect on maybe what's going on in your life, maybe the things that you need God to do for you, the things that you need to thank God for. I'm gonna ask you to take this opportunity just to posture yourself to pray, to prepare your heart to, feel, to, to hear and to hear what God has for you, to feel his presence because it's here. If you're online, his presence is with you in your home or in your car. So I'm going to ask you today to lean into him right now, in this moment. God knows everything we're going through. It may be a struggle today. It may be a good time for you in your life, but he knows that. So I'm going to ask you to allow him to capture your heart. Let him captivate you today, all of you. Dear Heavenly Father, we enter into prayer right now, Lord, and I just pray that we can pause to be still or to breathe slowly and to recenter our focuses on you today lord i pray that we can focus on your presence today and nothing else in this moment i pray that you're going to guide our hearts lord and our minds help us to open our ears to hear what you may have for us today. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. You are our comforter. And as we pause and we dive into some more worship today, Lord, and as we learn from your word, God, I pray that you captivate my heart today. Expand my mind and shape my identity in you today. Amen. You know, I heard something this week about faith, and for me it was just too good to not share with you guys today. So faith, that means we take the next step. We step out of our comfort zone that is just so easy to stay in. We are called not only to have faith, but to have great faith in our God, to have faith in our calling, and to have faith in our purpose. But I promise you that you cannot do that, and I cannot do that if I don't take time every single day with my God. Whether it's a few minutes, whether it's an hour, it's the time that you take with him. And we can't put restrictions on our God because he wants to do so much more in you than you have ever planned. So today, let's not allow that comfort zone to become our crutch, because that's what it does. Let's not be afraid to fail, because we have a God who's there to catch us when we fall. Sometimes, I feel like we're waiting on God to move, but he's waiting on us to jump, right? To have that great faith, and I heard this and it stuck out to me, is when we don't have enough faith in God to trust him and release all control, we're telling God to follow us. And man, that was a gut punch for me to hear, is when we cannot release that control, we're really telling God, why don't you just follow my plans? So having this faith in God doesn't mean that we're trying to change his will. It means that that faith is empowering us to do his will. So this scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5.24, says this, The one who calls you by name is trustworthy, and he will thoroughly complete his work in you. God is calling you by name today. 
So I'm going to ask you to just pause for the next couple seconds as I say a closing prayer before we go on and hear from him. Listen to what God has to say to you today. Father, help us today, God, just to live this day to the fullest, God. I pray that we can be true to you in every single way, Lord. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, Lord. I pray that you truly break my heart for what breaks yours. Help us be kind to every single person we meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost. Help me to get out there and teach you in all that I say and do today. Amen. I just want to move you. What moves you? I just want to love you. Lord, you're my desire. I just want to touch you. Embrace you. I just want to know you. To feel what you love.
today. Let him know what you have wanted, what you have longed for. God, that you will open our minds, open our hearts, and open us up to receive whatever it is, God, that you have for us today. We thank you for this moment, and we praise your name. Amen. You guys can be seated. Good morning. Welcome to Gear City Church. We're so thankful that all of you guys are here today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, whether you're in the room or whether you're online today, we are so grateful that you chose to be with us here in January. We're excited about this series that we're in. We've been talking about the importance of hearing from God and hearing what God has to say to each of us. We're in this series simply titled, Nehemiah, Rise and Build. And in this series, we're, we're following the story in the book of Nehemiah. It's a story of where the walls were torn down around Jerusalem they have been down for more than 100 years, and God had spoke to Nehemiah to go and rebuild those walls. And as he got this vision, he began to pursue the vision. He began to listen for the voice of God, for God to direct him in every area. And we're going to dive in and talk about that today. If you're in the room today, when you came in, there was one of these cards that was laying in your seat. And uh, be sure and keep that close to you, because we're going to talk about my one word and where we're going to go from here concerning that. Well, today as we dive into the message, I, I want you to wrap your mind around and understand exactly what was happening with Nehemiah as he began to pursue what God had put in his heart. The enemy was fighting on every side, but Nehemiah had a plan. As a matter of fact, he had a formula, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that formula today. Last week, we talked about the importance of that formula because he, he first of all, he prayed, then he had a plan, and then he pushed forward. Sometimes in the midst of us hearing from God, we, we fail to, to actually pray and we just plan. We try to push forward without the prayer. That's the reason we've been praying and <clears throat> pursuing in the 21 days of prayer and fasting that we hear the voice of God, that we know what God is saying to us, and that as we pray and as we fast, that we're confident that God will actually speak to us. And I believe that God is speaking to each of us. God is speaking to all of us about the word that he wants us to pursue for this year, the, the call that he has for each of us. Now, as you begin to think about this, this praying and this planning, as he prayed and he had a plan set forth, there were some things that began to happen in the plan. The plan at, at different times got challenged and the plan even changed and the strategy changed because the enemy continued to fight. The enemy continued to bombard them and try to cause dissension, try to cause 
uh, scattering, tried to cause disunity, all of those things. But in the midst of that, Nehemiah stayed faithful. He stayed faithful to the plan. You see, when you think about what Nehemiah was called to do, Nehemiah lived in Persia, but he was going to travel to Jerusalem more than a thousand miles away to rebuild the city walls around Jerusalem, the, the walls that were torn down when his ancestors lived there. And he felt this call from God. And because of the call that he felt, because of the, the mission that he had before him, he was so adamant about finishing the work. He was so, he was so called to the point that no matter what the enemy done, no matter, no matter how the enemy fought, no matter the words that were spoken to him, he did not give up on the call. He didn't give up on the mission. He didn't give up on what God had spoke to him. And in this story, we're going we're gonna to continue to see what happened. When you think about exactly what it takes first, let's talk about that. Prayer. 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're in day 14 right now with seven days left in our 21 days of praying and fasting. And as, as we pray and as we seek God, as we, as we push back from the table, as we push back from, from eating and, and maybe fasting some things in our life, <coughs> whether that's a particular food or whether that's something that you're fasting from, and we're praying intentional prayers every day. We're praying for God to speak to us. I believe it's in those moments where God de begins to develop inside of us the tenacity that it takes, the boldness that it takes, the courage that it takes to actually do what God has called us to do. I believe this. I believe that God has called each of us. I believe that God has spoken to each of us about every area of our life. <laughs> it's in different seasons of our life that we, we face battles and we go through struggles. And you might be in a season right now that's overwhelming for you, but here's what I believe. I believe God has a word for you. Would you look at somebody right around you right now where you're sitting or at home and tell them God's got a word for you? That's what I believe God has a word for us. Now, I want to tell you something. In the midst of the vision or the purpose or the call that God has put in your life, there's something that's called vision vandals. I wrote it this way. Vision vandals will always try to kill your dreams. There were some people <coughs> that were trying to kill the dreams of Nehemiah, Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem. They all was fighting against what Nehemiah had been called to do. Last week, we identified them. We, we identified them this way, the, the STGs, Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem. Get the STGs out of your life. And for some of us, we haven't identified who those people are. We haven't identified the negativity that's around us. But I want to encourage you today to move in that, to realize that there are vision vandals that are going to try to kill the dreams and the vision that God has put in your life. Many of you are fighting that right now. Because everywhere you turn, there's people that maybe don't believe in you. There's people that speak negative about you. For everywhere you turn, there's always a detour. There's always something that's going on to hinder you. That is the enemy. You've got to identify that the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And in every area of your life and in every season that you're in... You've got to recognize that there are vision vandals that are out there. They're there for one purpose, working for the enemy to destroy what God put in your heart. You see, I think about all the things that had happened in, in, in Nehemiah's life as he traveled from Persia and he made his way all the way to Jerusalem, more than a thousand miles. I think about the, the vision vandals, the people that spoke negative. I think about as they continued to fight against him, there was something that Nehemiah done. You see, in Nehemiah, the, the fourth chapter, Samballat made the statement. He said, oh, those poor, feeble Jews, what do they think they're doing? But in Nehemiah 4, Nehemiah made this statement. He said, then I prayed. I want to tell you, in the midst of an attack from the enemy, We've got to know that prayer is our resource. Prayer is our source of strength. Prayer is our source of battling. Prayer is our source to be able to tear down 
what the enemy has built up against us. Then I prayed. I want to tell you, Nehemiah prayed when the enemy fought. When, when Samballot had just said, listen, get this through your mind. These poor feeble Jews, what do they think they're doing? They can't do anything. It says, then I prayed. There are some of you right now that are facing the enemy. There's some of you right now in this season. You're on day 14 of 21 days of prayer. You're, you're in the midst of this January push of a new year and what God's going to do in your life, and you're ready to quit. I want to tell you, pray. Nehemiah said, then I prayed. And the harder you work for God, the more intentional you are to fulfill the vision that God has called you to, I want you to know something. The enemy's going to fight you. He's going to battle you on every side. But Nehemiah said, then I prayed. It's in the midst of this prayer. It's in the midst of our praying and our fasting that we hear the voice of God. Too many times people just want to quit because it gets hard. It gets difficult. It gets, it gets overwhelming. Well, I, I want to do great things, and I want to follow God, and, 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 and I, I want to get my one word, but man, it's just too hard. It's just too difficult. And all the while, the enemy is winning when we back up from what God has called us to do. Don't quit. Whatever you do, don't quit. Sometimes we look at it and we're like, man, it's just too big of a risk. It causes me, it causes me too much anxiety. It causes me to stretch too much. I'm not prepared for all of that. Well, I want you to know that in the midst of all of that, in the midst of the risk that you're taking, that's where God moves. I, I wrote it this way, and uh, I want you to think about this. Our biggest risk is not taking a risk. Our biggest risk is actually not even taking a risk at all. I mean, it's easy to just coast along. It's easy to just go through the motions. It's easy to just say, oh man, I, I don't want to risk it. It's too difficult. It's going to change my pattern. It's going to change my routine. It's going to mess up what I've got planned. It's too big of a risk. I don't want to step out on faith because what if it don't happen? I don't want to. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew because I, I don't really. I don't really. I don't really know if this whole thing can can actually take place. But let me help you to understand something. If you hear from God, if you know it's God's plan, you got to remember it's God's plan and not your plan. And if it's His plan, the risk is worth it. The biggest risk is not taking a risk at all. I think about the generations that would have been affected if Nehemiah had not went and rebuilt the walls. You see, the walls represented protection. The walls around Jerusalem represented boundaries. The walls represented a, a fortified city that had protection. It had boundaries. It represented vulnerability when the walls are torn down. And for more than 100 years, the people of Israel were vulnerable. And in our lives, many times what happens, we're, we're vulnerable to the temptation of sin. We're vulnerable to the things that's going on in our life that the temptations that the enemy puts in front of us to just sit still, to not risk it. I mean, why didn't somebody else rebuild the walls? Here's Nehemiah. The walls have been down for more than 100 years, and nobody else would take the risk. Nobody else would step out in faith. Nobody else was bold enough. Nobody else had enough courage. I want to say to you and I today that we can take courage. <coughs> we can take courage in what God has called us to do. When I begin to think about Nehemiah, I, I think about how the enemy attacked. He attacked him on every side. We're going to jump to Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. And in the fourth chapter, there's a scripture that I want to read because Nehemiah was speaking to the people who were working on the wall. The people had gathered around, friends, family, different tribes had come together. 
And they were all working together, but the enemy continued to fight. And Nehemiah made a statement in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. He said this, don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious. Sometimes we need to be reminded of who he is. Today in your life, in this middle of January, 14 days into the 21 days of prayer and fasting, maybe today you just need to be reminded. You see, the enemy continued to fight Nehemiah and all the people that was there. The STGs kept running their mouth. They kept trying to cause detours. But Nehemiah was reminding them Remember the Lord who is great and glorious. <clears throat> Sometimes in our life, we've got to come to a place where we stop backing down when the enemy raises his head. I want to tell you, no matter what you're doing, if you're working for God, the enemy is going to raise his head. The enemy is going to try his best to stop what God is doing. But I want to challenge you. As Nehemiah spoke to the people on the wall, he said to them, don't stop working. As a matter of fact, I wrote it this way. Don't stop working even when the enemy is threatening. Have a weapon and a tool. The Bible says this in Nehemiah chapter 4. It said that they had a weapon in one hand and a tool in the other hand. They continued to work on the wall even though they had to fight in the middle of working on the wall. In the middle of the vision, working in the middle of the dream that God had put in their heart to rebuild the wall, the enemy kept attacking and they had to keep a weapon in their hand. They would work a while and then the enemy would attack and they'd fight a while. Sometimes in the midst of when the enemy is attacking, we've got to keep a weapon in one hand and a tool in the other hand. If you think just because God called you to something, it's going to be easy that the enemy is not going to fight you. You're sadly mistaken. Nehemiah was called to rise and to build the walls, to rebuild what the enemy had torn down. But in the midst of all that, the enemy continued to fight. Keep working, but be aware. Can I say to you today, keep working, but be aware? Be aware that the enemy is out there. Be aware that there are STGs that are out there that's going to try their best to speak negative against you. They're going to try to tear you down. The enemy desires for you to not fulfill and to finish the assignment that's been called, that you've been called to. He desires for you to quit. He desires for you to give up. He desires for you to just throw in the towel. But don't quit. Keep a weapon in one hand. Keep a tool in the other hand as we continue to work for God with that weapon and with that tool. I want you to know that God will honor that. Sometimes I think what happens is we get comfortable just thinking, well, if God called me to it, then it shouldn't be this hard. There's nowhere in the Bible that can give any truth to when God calls you to something, when God speaks to you to do something, that it's simple. That it's easy, but it's well worth every bit of heartache. It's well worth the fight. It's well worth the battle that we go through. When you think about what Nehemiah was called to, he knew it was a great work. He knew that everything that he was called to do <coughs> seemed to be impossible by some people. But he knew what God called him to do was possible because he knew God called him to do that. I simply want to ask you that question. Whatever it is that God's wanting you to do, it can seem too big. It can seem impossible. It can seem like there's no way for it to happen. But if you know God called you to it, then he's going to prepare the way for you to get to what he's called you to. But not without distraction. In the scripture in Nehemiah chapter 6, we're going to jump to chapter 6 and verse 3. The scripture says this. 
I'm engaged in a great work, so I can't come down. Here was the deal. Again, the STGs showed up. They tried to call Nehemiah down off the wall. They said, hey, listen, stop what you're doing for a minute. We need to meet with you. We need you to come down here. We got some things we've got to discuss. We got to, we got to talk about some stuff. So come on down and meet with us. But Nehemiah recognized the distraction. Nehemiah recognized that it was a, another tactic, <clears throat> another tool of the enemy. So in the midst of, of them calling him down off the wall to meet with them, he said, no, I can't do it. He said, the work that I've been called to is too great. I can't come down. Sometimes in our lives, what happens is we listen to the wrong voices. We listen to the wrong voices, and, and, and distraction happens. And the reason we listen to the wrong voices is because we've not removed the voices from our life that sometimes distract us. The people that are not on the same mission as you, the people that are not on the same path as you, sometimes the voices that they have will distract us and saying things like, man, it's never going to change. Saying things like, yeah, the same thing happened to me, man. I don't know why God keeps letting this stuff happen to me. We listen to the wrong voices. You see, when you know the voice of God, when you listen for the voice of God, when you're seeking the voice of God, you'll be able to hear him. Sadly enough, what happens is all we hear is the enemy's voice. We hear the distraction. And in the middle of this 21 days of prayer and fasting, Maybe today you need to just cut out all distractions. Maybe you just need to quiet yourself in a moment. Quiet yourself in your prayer. Quiet yourself away from social media, from television. Maybe when you're at home at night, you just need to sit and just listen. I want to tell you, in the midst of this battle that Nehemiah was in, there were setbacks. But setbacks didn't bother Nehemiah because he knew what the assignment was. In the middle of the setbacks, again, it says, then I prayed. You might have setbacks in what you feel like God has called you to do. It might not happen at the pace that you thought it was going to happen. It might not happen in the time that you planned for it to happen. But even in the setbacks, listen for the voice of God. You see, with Nehemiah, even though the threats came, they couldn't stop him. The reason that they couldn't stop him is because he knew he heard the voice of God. And he was determined to finish the assignment that was given to him. I wonder today if we recognize distractions in our life. In Nehemiah chapter 6, we skip on to verse 8. In verse 8, it says this, there is no truth in any part of your story. You're making up the whole thing. Isn't this so powerful to realize that even then, there were people that gossiped. There were people that talked about him. So that's the story here. Here's the deal. Sanballat started this rumor that the only reason Nehemiah wanted to rebuild the walls is because he wanted to be the king. And Nehemiah had to speak against the rumor that was started. I want to tell you, in your life, there are going to be times, there are going to be people who are going to start rumors, are going to start negativity about you and what God is calling you to do, about the plan that you're trying to, trying to fulfill in God. Everybody's not going to agree with you. And everybody is not going to support you. But when you know you've heard the voice of God, you can be like Nehemiah and say, hey, there's no truth to any part of what you're saying. You're making up the whole thing. And all the while, Nehemiah stood with a weapon in one hand and a tool in the other hand. 
And the people continued to work. And Nehemiah continued to lead them. They continued to rebuild the wall. The problem is many of us don't know our circle of influence. We don't recognize the circle of influence around us. We don't recognize the people that may be influencing us rather than us influencing them. See, there's always going to be people to speak negative. There's always going to be people to talk about what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. There's always going to be people who's thinking you're just trying to climb your way to the top. But when you know you've heard the voice of God. This won't be on your screen, but I want to read this scripture in verse 9 of Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah said it this way. They were just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. So I continued to work with even greater determination. Every time that the enemy speaks negative, if we could just make up our mind that no matter what the enemy says, no matter how people may talk and the enemy uses them to speak negative words to us, if we could make up our mind that no matter what happens, I'm going to work with greater determination. Let it be fuel for your fire. The fire that God put on the inside of you. The burning on the inside of you. Sometimes I think that when the enemy is working, and we begin to hear voices chirping. We begin to hear chatter going on around us. We begin to listen to the detours, to the distractions, to the gossip, and it stops the work of God. If Nehemiah had to listen, if those working on the wall had not have had a weapon in one hand and a tool in the other, the wall never would have got finished. and They would have quit. I love what T.D. Jake says when he's talking about walking through difficult times. He said it this way, you're only as strong as the weight that is put on you. Bishop T.D. Jakes. I wonder sometimes if we don't recognize exactly how strong God has made us. You're only as strong as that weight that's on your shoulders today. In 2022, we have challenged you with my one word. In your seats, there's these cards. And we, we've asked you to pray and hear the voice of God. And let God speak one word to you that he wants to focus to help you with this year. I'm going to ask that you'll grab your card and grab a pen out of your personal items or in the seat backs there. And, and that you'll fill out the back of the card. Because on the back of the card... It's a place for your name, a place for your word. And there's two separate cards. And then what we're going to ask you to do is to fill that out. I'm going to pray over it in just a moment. And then just fold the card and tear the card in half. So you're going to have two cards. And then with that, take one with you. And then at the end of the experience, we're going to have some buckets at the back door. I'm going to ask you to drop your other card in there. Because we want to pray over your one word this year. Nehemiah, rise and build. As I close today, I want to ask you this question. Will you hear his voice? I want to ask you this question. Are you following Jesus? Have you heard him call you, first of all, to salvation? And if you have, then what's he calling you to next? Because God's got a purpose, got a plan for your life today. If you're here in this room or you're listening online, and maybe today you've never even made a choice to follow Jesus, I want you to know that today could be the greatest day of your life by simply asking him to come into your heart. 
Today, if you're already following Jesus, listen. Be intent to turn away the distractions. To recognize the detours that the enemy puts in front of you. And to pray and ask God to speak to you about you. I'm going to ask if you would to put your one word card in your hand. We're going to pray together today. Would you bow your hearts with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that is so real. Lord, I ask today that first and foremost, anyone that's listened to this message today that has never accepted you as Savior, but today they feel like that this is the day, that this is the moment, I pray, Lord, that they'll confess you as Savior. Lord, they'll ask you to come into their heart. Lord, I pray that this will be the moment that changes their entire world. God, that they would receive you as Savior. And as you promise, you'll accept them as your child. Lord, we believe that for every person that prays that today. And Father, for those who are praying about the plan, the vision, the dreams that you put in their heart for 2022, Lord, I pray that this one word card that you'll reveal to them God, that one word, Lord, and as they write that word down, I pray that that word would challenge them. God, they would grow in every part of that this year. Father, thank you for the story of Nehemiah and how it inspires so many. We pray it continue to inspire all of us. We thank you for it, and we believe it. In Jesus' name, amen. on the video if you guys would fill these out uh, we really do want you to keep one and put it somewhere where you can see it every day just as a reminder of the word that you chose to focus on for the rest of this year the other half of it they're the same card if you wouldn't mind to fill it out and you can leave it in one of the buckets the ushers will have those as you exit today um, a lot of you have given your your words to each other or to Stacy uh, but we'd still love to have this because we're going to make sure that we pray over every single word that all of our church family, if you're online, if you feel comfortable, you can put your word in the comment. If you want a um, private message, Gear City Facebook, you can do that. Or we can get you one of these, these cards as well, either through the mail or if you're here next week. So thank you for doing that and for allowing us to pray over that with you. Also, maybe today you made a decision that you want to start following God. Maybe you made a decision today for the first time or you've recommitted your life. If you did that, we do have this packet called Start to Follow, and we have a table right there in the back of the auditorium, and we would love for you to stop back by there and pick up this packet. It has a Start to Follow book, and it also has a Bible. And so if you're online and you've made that decision, just put Start to Follow in the comments, or again, you can private message us, and we will put this in the mail to you tomorrow because we wanna make sure that we can help you start this journey with God. And so thank you guys so much for being here. Whether you're maybe new in person or if you're new online, we want to be able to connect with you. If you are in person and this is your first time, you'll notice there are three cards in the seat back pocket in front of you, and you can grab those. If you're online, there'll be some links that come up that you can go to. Um, and we would love for you to fill out a guest card. And that just gives us the information to connect with you. It's basic information. Um, and then that way we can tell you what's going up or what's going on. And then next up is our next steps. And so maybe you are going to fill out the start to follow card today and get this packet. Or maybe you've been here for a while, but you haven't been plugged in and you want to know what's my next step. You can fill out that card. You can click on that link and we will get that information to you starting tomorrow and throughout this week. And again, prayer requests are so important. This is big for us. We are going to pray over your one words for the year. But if you have any other prayer requests, Whatever they might be, you can fill out that card. You can email prayer at gearcitychurch.com or you can go to our website and submit your prayer request. And that helps us to know what you're going through and what we can pray over for you. So thank you guys for allowing us to do that. And if you are a Gear City family, you know, we always give you the chance to give to God. And I read this and wrote it down is that in whatever area of your life that you want God to bless you, always put him first. So maybe you say, I can't give, I'm struggling financially. Put God first, give back to him first, right? That's what I wanna challenge you in. It's just whatever area of life that you want God to bless you in, put him first. So if you're gonna give today or throughout the week, um, there are multiple ways. There are envelopes in the seat back pockets that you guys can grab and you can give and turn those in on your way out today. You can also give online at any time on our website. 
or you can text 84321, and you can um, text the amount you want to give. And if you have questions about that, you can always see us after uh, we dismiss. So if you would, just bow your heads today. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together to begin our week with you, God, with each other, with our church family, God. We are just so incredibly blessed, Lord. And I just pray right now, God, whatever it is that people may be facing, God, whatever area of life we want to be blessed in, God, that we will put you first, God. And I pray that you just pour on the blessing so that people know it has to be you, God. So I just pray that you take care of our church family, God. I thank you for every single penny that is given towards your vision, God. And I pray that you continue to pour that vision into Gear City Church so that we can reach those who are lost, who are hurting, God, who are lonely, Lord. And we thank you for this opportunity. In your name, amen. Before you go, we want to remind you that we have our kids' night out coming up. So this night is February 4th. It's three hours that are completely focused on the kids. They are going to come in here. They're going to have a blast. There's going to be games and crafts and, and all the different things. They've had bounce houses before. They, do, they, they serve food and drinks. And so this night is geared towards your kids. So if you have kids and you want three hours as a parent to go out and do something different or go home and just sit in silence, Get your kids registered. You have to do that online, right? And there is a cutoff. It's a week out. So if you want your kids to sign, if you want to sign your kids up, do it now. Even if like a week out comes and they can't come, it's okay. But if a week out comes and you ask me to register your kids, I'm going to have to tell you no. So sign up now if you want your kids to do that. Also, starting next Sunday, we are going to have our signups for group life. They are kicking back up in February. So we just wanted to give you a heads up. So that you're not going to go today and register online. Those are all the groups from last year, but we will update that and starting next week and the following two weeks after that, you guys will sign up and then we'll start in um, towards the mid to end February with our group life. We are super excited about that because if you've been here long enough, you know that we say that life is better together. And so we're going to offer several different groups that you guys can be a part of. So thank you guys so much for being here. If you have questions about anything, you need to sign up for anything, we'll have hosts out in the lobby at guest services and you guys can see them. So you are dismissed. Have a great week. <laughs>